and the test I want to perform is... Let's stall it and see if we can land in the ocean. Also, I cut power and I just let it fall. Just in case I have also the mod that allows me to eject the pilot. Now we can see how it stalls and hopefully it should uh, regain a stable condition first and then I can try to glide uh, to the, towards the ocean. So there is no point in pitching up right now, so I reduce the trim and I can try to gain even speed a little bit, but uh, going too fast is probably not the best idea either, so I will uh, keep the speed uh, under 100 meters per second. As I descend, I will gain more and more control also, which is good. Now I can... Just because the uh, sound of the engine does not make a lot of sense, I will deactivate the engines. And... Uh, then the goal will be to glide into the ocean. I have never attempted this before, so we'll see how it works. And from what I have seen, uh, Solar Impulse was supposed to be able to land in the water because they pr there is a video where you can see uh, André and Bertrand practicing uh, escaping an aircraft in the water. So I think it could have been possible. The main safety procedure was uh, to eject, I think. And they had a raft uh, uh, attached uh, very close to the parachute. It was in the back of the seat, so when the pilot um, decided to leave the aircraft, he had automatically a raft attached with him in case of, you know, uh, landing in an ocean. but. Uh, also, I think that uh, landing with the aircraft inside of jumping with a parachute was possible. And that's why I'm trying to test also now. So Jebediah will have to take a bath. I really hope that I don't uh, basically topple over but if I am um, slow enough, it shouldn't happen. Again, we are pretty stable. I can gain a, a bit of speed because there is no need. It's not like we are trying to reach uh, landing sweep, so <laughs> let's go right for the ocean now. Okay, pulled a bit too much. I will flare as usual to reduce my vertical speed when I am uh, really about to touch down in the water. At least that's the idea. Okay, 500 meters. The speed is good. Now I pick up speed to just be on the safe side. And now I think I can flare up a bit. Okay, my I need to slow down my descent. This is a decent glider, but I, I need to pitch up more. It's all, all about balance between uh, keeping the speed to keeping the aircraft flying, but still uh, pitching uh, upwards to uh, reduce the vertical speed. And now I have to pitch back, back up. 5 meters per second. Ok, 
Okay. Okay, I don't want to store it. And the final pitch up. Okay, this aircraft is so slow that it, you don't have real problems. But I'm happy that it did not topple over like this. I was not exactly sure, perhaps, if there is too much mass in the front and uh, too much drag here, it could have toppled over, but it was okay. So, EVA, and Jeb, it's time to have a bath. Yay! But now the question is, what happens if I crash in the water? Because, um, yeah, we are pretty far away from a lot of uh, things. We, have, uh, we are in the middle of the ocean. So, what should I do now? So now we are at the end of the runway, because I would like to perform a last test. Which is it? Well, here we can see that we have an aircraft, and actually it is an, uh, it is an amphibious aircraft. And I want to see if I can try to recover the pilot in the water with an amphibious aircraft. I named it the Shinkeiwa. I won't explain to you why, but you can easily find it um, I think on Google, by doing a search on that name. So Shin K Wa is a K, of course. I think you can figure it out. And some of you might already know, so it's a bit of a riddle right there. Now, what I wanted to do first was to use um, uh, turbo props from the KX mo uh, mod, but uh, in the end, when I tried to when I tried to land in the water. You see the turbo pops that were the same place as the entries, the air intakes. When they, when I tried to land, the front here of the plane tended to go down in the water, and they would hit the hit box of the turbo props would hit each and every time. And even though the aircraft is decently balanced, I think they would hit. There was no way to avoid. A collision, so I had to replace the turbo props with uh, jet engines. So I just have to fly now, and uh, hopefully I will be able to land and recover the pilot. While I'm here, I just want to say why I uh, try actually to do that because. Well, at first I could just, you know, recover the pilot, but I, I decided it could be a nice touch of trying to recover with an actual aircraft. And uh, perhaps, well, I don't know if I am going to do it, because I not know not a lot about streaming, but I might try to do a live stream. And if I have an accident during live stream, I would like to be able to recover a pilot uh, during the stream without hitting the recover button, so I decided might as well have uh, an aircraft that can take the pilot out of the water, and it is always important, I think, to test uh, uh, that kind of stuff, because sometimes the hatch is obstructed, sometimes it is too high, sometimes you cannot reach the ladder, so I decided to, to test it. Okay, so while we, have, while we are flying, I would like to add a few points about the scientific method and its use in everyday life. So, at first it doesn't seem like it is useful, because um, after all, um, it should be uh, useful only in labs, but it has a few very important uh, ideas that can be applied. For example, testing and uh, also be be ready to change your ideas when you think when you see that you 
the method you tried to implement doesn't work. And it, it can work on several fields, I would say, of the everyday life. And for example, perhaps it's simpler with these examples, um, it can work when you see an ad about a product because they will claim a lot of uh, positive things about the product. But are they true? It's important to have critical thinking, to try to find reviews, for example, and even if at first it seems like the product was good, it's great to be able to change your mind. Uh, same thing about, uh, perhaps it's a bit sensitive, but I will uh, also say that um, in politics uh, there are a lot of claims that are thrown around and some are not, I don't think everything is wrong in what uh, politicians say, say but it's important to check, to try to check if, see if there are evidence behind what they say and uh, even if some things seem good at first, they can be wrong. So, uh, even if we are attached to some ideas, we should be able to change our mind if it turns out they are not correct. Uh, but most importantly, um, what I wanted to say is that uh, a good example is uh, everyday life methods you put in practice because for example if you decide uh, to have a certain schedule but in the end it doesn't work so you might think it's because you are lazy and uh, you might try to, to apply the same type of schedule and try harder and do more and more of the same but sometimes it's not your idea that was wrong, it's just that it was not realistic, it was not practical. So instead of doing more of the same, we should sometimes do uh, tweakings of what we imagine is a good idea, a good method, and or sometimes change method, even in every, everyday life. It happened to me a few times when I thought I was perhaps too lazy or um, just not putting the idea of practice well enough and just turned out that to be tweaked. But sometimes you are attached to what you saw because you, you think, oh, I really figured that out, I thought about it, it has to be right, so I, I'm just not capable of implementing it correctly. But no, sometimes it's the idea, the method that is wrong. And your schedule that you try to absolutely keep just doesn't work, or the, perhaps I should say the way you are creating your schedule. So it can be, you have to adapt scientific method to, for it to work in real life, but I think it really can. So to summarize what I wanted to say is that uh, some ideas from the scientific method uh, can be very useful in everyday life too. and. Uh, can really bring you some serious benefits. So don't be afraid to experiment and to try to learn more on the subject. Now we are uh, going to land near the Kerbala Impulse uh, aircraft. And um, as you can see, I start uh, derping around by opening the cargo bay. Fortunately, I uh, realized it and decided to close it. I think it could have been perhaps a bit dangerous to land with the uh, cargo bay open, so fortunately I saw it. And now, also as you can see, I am overshooting uh, by quite a lot, but it's not a huge problem, because um, this aircraft is quite agile um, in the water. I can use the Weasley engine's uh, thrust reversers to turn and it is quite fast in a straight line also, so no problems. I'm surprised of how long it takes for it to go down, but any moment now, any moment and let's touch down. I think it went uh, decently well. And here we are in file and approach, so I uh, just have to um, manually use the thrust reversers and uh, I should be able to get close enough and in fact the combination of uh, having an action group bound to 
toggling the first reversals is very useful. Here I have to start swimming, but I realize that the um, recovery aircraft is still a bit too far, so uh, a little bit more approaching will be necessary, so here we go, I accelerate the uh, speed of the video again, and I um, again use the first reversals to maneuver, I can turn um, relatively easily. It's, it's really convenient. I, I really like this system. And hopefully we will approach Jeb fast enough. I have to be careful not to bump into Carbolar Impulse and Jeb. So here I am a bit too fast. Oh, reverse, reverse, increase thrust. And I managed to slow down uh, in time, so now it's time to swim. And uh, yeah, it's quite a uh, long swim still because uh, Kerbots are slow in the water. But thanks to the tools of editing, I can speed this part up too, and Jeb yeah, is a bit, a bit faster now. So now I really hope that I can reach the ladder. Um, and so here I have put two lights next to the crew hatch, so I can see what I am doing even at night, and it's also better for recording. And here I should be able to grab the ladder and climb, yes, and board. Yeah, it works. It works fine. So now, now we can put Jeb in the uh, passenger cabin. Why? Because why not? Yeah, why not? And uh, I transfer him there. And here we can see the view that he has from the passenger cabin. I don't know why, but I really like these internal views. It's a bit strange, but I really think they give something more to the game. I really like sometimes to 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 just watch from the internal view, and here you can see um, the float, the left float, and it is it is also really useful to balance the plane. While we are while we are at it, I can uh, show to you the cargo bay, and it will be used to um, contain a drill and a converter tron, so if I have a problem with r with fuel, I can uh, drill some ore and then convert it to fuel. So we are now reaching the end of this video, so it's time for me to conclude and to talk about the rest of the series. So, the idea I have is still to um, go around the world, or perhaps should I say around Caribbean, with this aircraft without uh, any support, ideally, so I think it will be possible. The problem is that I don't know if I am going to do a live stream of this or a series of video. Why? Because on one hand I am a noob at uh, streaming, a complete noob, and also it could be boring. But on the other hand, it would leave a lot of uh, time to interact and perhaps I could do uh, all s other things in uh, another scene while in the background there is an aircraft in the stable flight. So I don't know, I need to think about it. But anyways, thank you for your attention and see you guys next time.